Hampstead is one of the eight new towns being built around London. Its aim is to house 40,000 people from the metropolis in such a way as to provide them with work and amenities. This is being done by grafting new development onto the ancient borough of Hemel Hempstead, which has grown over the centuries in the valleys among a group of hills 26 miles from Marble Arch. The River Gade passes through the centre of the town, joins the Bullbourne at two waters and flows on towards Watford. The town has charters from the time of Henry VIII, and in this tower Henry and Anne Boleyn are said to have spent the weekend. These lovely gardens are Park Gatebridge Park, now owned and cared for by the Borough Council. The old High Street is mainly 17th century. And these lovely houses are reminders of the prosperity enjoyed by some in earlier times. The Church of St. Mary, the town's parish church, has a typical Hertfordshire spire and a beautiful Norman interior. The town is blessed by a wooded landscape, and among the trees are a number of private schools, some very well known. Hemel Hempstead County Grammar School was founded at the start of this century. The first new town neighbourhood, Adifield, was settled in 1950 and the following years. The corporation has built 8,500 dwellings, including a wide variety of flats and two, three and four bedroom houses, 50% of which have garages. Each neighbourhood has a shopping and social centre, and this is Queen Square, named after the visit of Queen Elizabeth in 1952. A wide variety of shops enclose three sides of the central parking area. The fourth side is formed by Edifield Hall, a social centre housing a community hall, meeting rooms, branch library and clinic. It is used by over 40 social organisations. The first new town pub closes a corner of the square. Many churches have been built since the new town started. This is St. Barnabas, the new Anglican church. And this, the Roman Catholic church, serving the eastern part of the town. Playing fields are being provided in each neighbourhood. The wreath fields here, named after the corporation's first chairman, are now run by the borough council. There are playgrounds for smaller children in all the neighbourhoods. Nor are the old forgotten. These flats and bungalows adjoining the Edifield Centre are typical of several groups throughout the town. People have been living in Edifield for eight or nine years. The trees and shrubs have grown and there is a feeling of maturity in the landscaping and in the look of the houses. Bennett's End, the second neighbourhood, also has its centre, Bennett's Gate and the community building provided through the joint enterprise of the Borough Council, the Development Corporation and the people of Bennett's End. The community centre includes changing rooms for sport and a clinic. St. Benedict's Anglican Church is a fine example of the new architecture. The terrace of three-storey, four-bedroom houses is perhaps a throwback to Georgian times. The houses provide a lot of floor space in a narrow frontage. These pitches belong to the town's thriving rugby club and on the edge of Chaldon, the third neighbourhood which houses about 4,000 people. Chaldon has a small centre with ten shops, a pub and a community centre with the primary school just beyond. This is the shopping centre of Warner's End, the fourth neighbourhood, with delightful St Albans Church close by. These colourful houses 
illustrate the town's wide variety of architectural design. These and other factories provide jobs for some five and a half thousand people in buildings varying from the small workshop to the factory employing nearly two thousand. In the early days, they largely employ men. The processes are mainly engineering, but the products range from electrical equipment to furniture, from machine tools to hot water bottles, from car axles to ballet shoes, and from tea urns to scientific glass blowers. Codex processed this film. The industrialists have done a fine job landscaping their buildings. No one living in the town is more than three miles from the industrial area. People travel to work by bus, by car, motorcycle and push bike, but many live near enough to walk the journey. Gabebridge is one of the later neighbourhoods. On its western side, these flats overlook a valley, a valley planned as a new playing field area for the sports clubs of the adjoining neighbourhoods. On the eastern side of the neighbourhood, more flats fringe the mellow, wooded Gabebridge Park. Design in this neighbourhood has considerable variety, both in the appearance and in the layout of the houses and flats. Bed-sitting room flats for young single people built over garages. Here, one bedroom flats for older people with family maisonettes above. A terrace ending in a group of corner flats, an example of the ingenuity with which architects have designed buildings to turn corners. Another innovation, pedestrians only, is the rule in the lane along the front of this terrace. Road access to the houses is at the rear, where there are garages and, most important, clearly numbered gates to make the delivery man's life easier. Tenants' gardens enhance the individuality of the houses and there is keen competition for the best display. These gardens border many a quiet close, like this one on the edge of the town, where toddlers can play safely. Gatebridge Neighbourhood Centre is flanked by the new Church of St. Peter. The centre has shops to meet the everyday needs of the locality. There is ample car parking space, and covered pedestrian ways make shopping pleasanter in all weathers. And, of course, the neighbourhood pub adjoining. The town centre is now well on the way to completion. A wide range of shops serves the growing town and many places around. Through traffic is a nuisance, but a new bypass road is easing the problem. One section of the shopping scene is tucked away from traffic. The 400 years old market on its new site between the main street, Marlowe's, and the bus station. Shoppers arriving by bus can go straight into the market or into the new public house attached, the Great Harry, named after a ship of Henry VIII's time. Right next door, are the offices of the Employment Exchange and Income Tax Department. Just beyond is the police station and, a little way up the road, the public library. West Hertfordshire Hospital, one of the town's two hospitals, is just across Marlowe's from the market. Extensions have been built to meet the demands of the growing population. To meet another fast-growing demand, this three-storey car park has been built. Other car parks line the edges of the town centre. Because of the steep slope, those on the eastern side lead straight into the upper-level shopping on this side of Marlowe's.
In addition to shops on the upper level, there is a cafe overlooking the street. This forms a bridge over a shaded pool and fountains. Another fountain is the centerpiece of Bank Court, with banks and other offices grouped around. Yet another, much bigger fountain dominates the southern end of the water gardens created along the banks of the once meandering River Gade. These beautiful gardens flank the entire western side of the town centre, and here people can wander or rest and children can play. The gardens are, on fine days, a lunch hour retreat for the staffs of the new office blocks overlooking this river scene. Many of them moved out from cramped offices in London to work instead in the new buildings, in quiet surroundings, only a few minutes' journey from their homes. For indoor leisure, a new cinema, one of the few new ones in the country, with its coffee bar, the modern gossip shop, next door. Youth has its clubs. There are several in the town, and a large teenage population to fill them. Young people here can entertain themselves with talk, soft lights, and, well, music. Or maybe a game of table tennis. It is fitting that the film should end with the children. The town will be theirs. No matter where their parents come from, Hemel Hempstead is their hometown. In modern homes, on the playing fields and in fine new schools, the town's children will grow up in an environment of enterprise and beauty, all within the sense of stability which the old town breathes. This is a young people's town. Their future and the town's future are one.